In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Now, like the way me. we open the episode is we open with an introductory portion where we talk about current events or we'll mention our sponsors or we'll bring up studies. In today's episode, that's a bit about 36 minutes long. After that, we got into the questions. By the way, if you want to check out the episode as it's time stamped, in other words, you can fast forward to your favorite parts, go to mindpumppodcast.com. All right, so here's what happened in today's episode. We started by talking about the new probiotic supplement from Organifi. Dun, da, da. It's actually a powder. You put it in your mouth, uh, wash it down with water. Tastes pretty good. Justin said it tasted like uh, cereal remnants or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like checks. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's got probiotics and prebiotics for gut health. Now, Organifi is the maker of it, and they are one of our sponsors. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get 20% off any of their products. If you're interested, here's what you do. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. Then we talk about the show Alone on Netflix. That's really cool. Uh, then we talked about the COVID Alone. prohibition era. Apparently, there's a lot of black market gyms opening up, and there was an investigative article on it. It's kind of cool. Mm. Uh, I talked about how NASA speculates that there may be life on Venus. That's really cool. Justin brings up the new Japanese flying car. And then Adam it's talked coming. about an interesting uh, statistic or fact about real estate. Apparently, you can buy the rights above your house, air rights. That's kind of interesting. I'm going to look into that. Then we got into the questions. Uh, here's the first fitness question. This person wants to know how calisthenics compare to weights for building muscle and improving wellness. In that portion of the episode, we men mentioned our suspension trainer, program, which utilizes just your body weight called MAPS Suspension. Uh, if you're interested in checking that out, go to mapssuspension.com. The next question, this person says, look, you got $5,000. What kind of a home gym can you build with that? So we list all of the equipment we think Pimp are necessary. My gym. Right. That you could get for five grand or less to build an amazing home gym. During that discussion, we talked about our sponsor PRX that makes some of the best home gym equipment you'll find anywhere. One of their hallmark pieces of equipment is a squat rack that folds into the wall. It's very stable, but when you fold it into the wall, it literally comes off the wall maybe like 12 inches. Disappears. Uh, now you can park your car in the garage again, but when you fold it out, very stable, very secure. Rest your barbell on it. Do your squats and your overhead presses and your bench presses. By the way, if you want to check out PRX and use the Mind Pump discount, go to prxperformance.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code mind pump for 5% uh, off. The next question, this person wants to know how stimulants affect the muscle building process and recovery. So stimulants like caffeine we talk about. And then the final question, this person wants to know how you go about training and nutrition with people who have lost their period. Uh, now, here, check this out. Mind Pump is your favorite podcast. That's true. But we also produce we amazing fitness programs. So we have fitness programs for different people, different goals, okay? Maybe you want to train and build your body like a bodybuilder, or maybe you want functional athletic performance, or maybe you want to do correctional exercise, or train with just suspension trainers, or train with almost no equipment, maybe just some resistance bands. We have programs for all of that and more. What you do is you go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, go through the different programs, find the one that speaks to you, find the one that gives you what you're looking for with the equipment you have access to, um, and consider your current fitness level. Find the program that works best for you and get amazing results. Again, that's at mapsfitnessproducts.com. What if I want to train to be a Jedi? Dude, your voice yeah. cannot. It's one octave. That's it. I know. Yeah. Higher, Wonder. lower. Wait. What's hey, going on wait. here? What's that? What's that? What's this? Huh? Wow. Wow. That is that's, not, that that's is not, not the same thing. That is not the same. same. That is not the same. same. I, that's, I think it sounds the same. That's the Scott. Do it again, Adam. Uh, yeah. right. Ready? Wait, no. Hey. no. I do it by Him myself. Him first. Okay. Okay, what is that? And then what is this? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's enough. <laughs> Please stop. Let's all stop. <laughs> that actually right now. hurt my cheeks. Just uh, Adam, you haven't tried that yet. I haven't. I'm about to because Doug uh, Doug just handed it to me and said, just you, according to him, I can just throw this dry powder in my mouth and then and then rinse it down. It's the probiotic prebiotic uh, yeah. supplement from Organifi. So did this replace their probiotic pill, or are they, are they still carrying both? I don't know. Do you know, mm. Doug? Could you look that up? For, uh, no, Doug's like, God damn it. Leave it to Organifi though. It had a, a decent taste. Like I it, like it. I've been. 
been using yeah. it for the past. Uh, I used it this whole week, and uh, it feels good. Got really? feels good. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if it's like it seems. Well, I guess it seems about the Here, same. Throw me the packet. I yeah, want to look yeah, at yeah. the. Yeah. I, I want to look at it. You again. can read the science. It for tastes us. like the leftover crumbs <clears throat> of a Chex cereal. That's it what does. we determined. Yeah, we turn we determined that. It and, does. Uh, it's got okay. What? So it, like the crumbs of a Czech cereal? Yeah, like at the bottom. You know how like the bottom of the bag, everything's gone, but like sometimes. Hold like, on, hold yeah, on. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that powder hold dust. On, hold on a second. I've never done that. Have you done that? <laughs> what do you mean you've not done that? You're such a liar. <laughs> you got uh, you got the empty bag of cereal. And, yeah, bro. <laughs> like every last little. Speck of dust. Are we gonna Are we gonna discuss your relationship with food ever on this podcast? No, are, we, are we just gonna brush? No, it, are, we gotta, gonna, are we just gonna brush it under the rug? I'm here for the, for regular people that aren't like <laughs> super anal about everything. Hold you know on what a I mean? second. That's that's my role. Yeah, it's, it's prebiotics and probiotics uh, with 20 billion um, of the probiotics in there. So okay, with, so prebiotics feed the probiotics. That's why they're called pre, right? So it's uh, they're compounds that help. Feed the new bacteria that you're introducing. So tell tell it's called me called Organifi Balance. So tell me if I'm if, if I'm using things like this correctly. Thank you. Okay. I, I mean, maybe not so much right now. Like, but I'm going to do it just because Doug told no, me to. Yeah, and I want to I want to taste like what good no, checks, checks mix. Well, I'm so telling you, bro. Yeah, tell me I'm a liar. Here's the best way to use it: open the packet and then you sprinkle some in your eye. Stupid. See what happens. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, but uh, serious. No, okay. Um, this is how I use probiotics. I am not a uh, a daily probiotic user, um, and I've never told anybody else to do it this way. Um, but I do find value in it for this. So um, diet's been pretty dialed, been really good uh, for quite some time now. Um, but recently on my Q&A, somebody, uh, people like, I don't know why. Oh, oh, I do know why. Because I talk about ice cream, right? And, and so... <laughs> It's funny, right? How we do this, right? They know that it's a battle for me, so I get questions like, "Oh, what's your favorite yeah. ice cream?" Right? So, <laughs> so of course, Chunky Monkey, right? Of course, uh, talking about Thrifty's ice cream, which is my favorite, and I haven't had in a very long time. I broke down and I ordered the I, most jankiest ice cream of all no, time. Stop it! Stop yeah. Blas- Thrifty's blasphemy. Doug, can you mute him, please? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> mute his pod. M- yeah. Mute his mic, please. No. So That's I was like fifty cents. So I ordered some <laughs> ice cream. I like to do this test. There's a game I play with myself you get all the time. Sherbert. No, no, chocolate malted crunch and mint chip. Right. So all that's right. and I and uh, I like to think that after 20 years of, of fitness, I'm, I'm I'm getting beyond this this addiction and this issue that I can't not have it in the freezer. So I'm always like challenging myself, like it can yeah. be in there. Willpower. So I've been doing really good. I bought it last week. It's a uh, I mean, we're on, I think, day seven or eight since it's been in my freezer, and uh, more than half of it's left in both of them, actually. So, so you actually bought Thrifty's ice cream? Wow. I did. Where's I, Thrifty's around here? So they, they're at not, yeah. uh, what's uh, Rite Aid? Thank oh, you, Dan. Oh, okay. So they sold the Rite Aid, but- so far, <laughs> Pharmacy ice cream. It sounds so good. Hey, mm. so listen. Delicious. Listen, Linda. <laughs> So uh, Rite Aid bought out Thrifty's, the, the store, but Thrifty kept the brand of ice cream, probably because it crushes and does so well and because everybody is more like me. And Maybe like they you. sprinkle the leftover opiates in there. Yeah, the mint <laughs> one's happened. good. I'll be honest. I grew up with it's that. It's bomb, dude. Yeah. It's bomb. So anyways- I feel like it's the ice cream you eat with the wooden spoon. Listen, can I finish my commercial? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can I finish my commercial <laughs> here? Yeah, can, We're dragging it out. Organ- Organifi hates you. So oh, They love it. <laughs> I, use, I use the probiotics like this. I know- Okay, I know damn well what I'm doing when I have I have ice cream now because it do, just doesn't agree with me, but I still like to have it every once in a while. Okay, so before I eat the ice cream, I go and I take two of those probiotic pills, and I know it says only take one. I take two. Uh, about I like to be about a half hour or so before I have the ice cream, and then I eat the ice cream. When I do this, and I've done this enough times with and without it, uh, anecdotally speaking, it makes a big difference. I can feel. Uh, so normally, if you don't take the probiotic, you get the you get the cacas. I do really mm-hmm. bad. Yeah, I'm on the. I'm especially if I do anything more than like a little scoop. Like I've learned that I can do like a little scoop and enjoy. But God, who can do that, right? I have, I have, I have a bowl of ice cream. So yeah, it's like just the tip, not going to happen. Yeah. You're right. So I do a bowl of ice cream. Just like that. I eat that, and but before I do the probiotic, when I do that, now and, and let me tell you, it doesn't mean I have zero symptoms. It just dramatically makes it better. Mm. So instead of having like diarrhea all night long or having an upset stomach or feeling bloated like crazy till the next day, 
it really mitigates that. This is how I use probiotics. As a way a, to to strengthen your bad relationship with ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Piss off, guy. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no like that's actually parachute. that's actually how I use pre, pre, uh, probiotics. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll take them. Um, I don't take them every single day okay. unless Me I'm either. No, unless I'm noticing gut issues, then I'll take them daily. Yeah. But I typically have them, and I'll use them when I'm going to eat a food that I know bothers me. So if I'm going to eat gluten. Then I'll take it beforehand, and it does. It makes a difference. Yeah, when I'm traveling, especially, like, because you know that like your options are limited, so yeah. that's when I usually take those as well. Yeah, you it, my my favorite story though has to be the time that you, as a kid, bought uh, just what did you buy? A bunch of cookie dough and just ate it on the way to school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went. It's, I mean, we just came back home from school, and we used to walk, and we're this. just like. We have money that we just earn from random things. And it's like when you're a kid, you just think of whatever sounds awesome at the time. And so, we, yeah, we bought one of those Pillsbury Doughboy rolls. Like it was like a huge thing. We would try and finish the whole thing before we get home. Oh, my God. And uh, that sounds like a stomach ache. Yeah. I'm surprised. Like, I'm sure there was like ramifications for it, but now, I don't remember now when, that when you're part. A kid, when you're a kid, you have an iron gut. What is that? Now, is yeah. it? Oh, now, hold on. Let's think about this for a second. Is it that you have an iron gut or, or you're, you're not to- aware? You don't, yeah, you just go take a terrible I, I think shit. It's a, I care. think it's a little bit of yeah. both. I think there's a, I think you partially have an iron gut and then I think you also partially are just completely disconnected and unaware. Yeah. Cause I think, cause when I started to become aware a little bit that my food might be an issue was when I started taking weight gainers because mm. I'm, you know, I'm 15, 14 years old trying to pack on size. And so I'd buy the, the weight gainer that had the biggest number. So if there's like heavy weight gainer 200 or 2000, then I'm going to get the one that says 3000 cause that yeah. one's even better. See, I, I think- and I would drink it and then. Almost every time. By the way, the way I would drink this thing, I, I wish you guys were there. I used to I blend it in the in a big ass blender. My mom had these blenders that she'd make sauce in. Yeah, and I'd put the in these these huge gallon containers of of weight gainer powder, which normally you you think has 150 servings because it was literally a bucket. It looked like a bucket. No, they, uh, you like you a pink like, yeah, like, we had one of those too. Yeah, four, it, four scoops. Yes, and the scoop was <clears throat> was this big. It's like a so, shovel. Those of you guys watching on YouTube, you can see my hands. It was literally yeah. this big. And I'd scoop for it, and then I'd add whole milk. And when I hit blend, this is the sound the blender made. Bleh. Yeah, yeah. I never measured, dude. I just was like, "How much can I cram in there, you dude?" Know? And, and then I drink eggs in there and peanut butter oh. and everything else. And then I'd hold the 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 blender over the sink, and I'd sit there. And it was like it was my second workout, my first workout in the backyard, second workout standing over the sink, going, <sighs> and then. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you just you just thought it was like part of the training, yeah. like and all then, that stuff was a uh, you know part of like what you had to do. And I didn't put two and two together because I do that, and then I'd have terrible diarrhea, and I'd be like, "Why am I losing weight on this weight gainer? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense." And then my mom was like, "Do you think maybe it's because yeah you're shitting yourself?" You're, like, you're I think as a, I think as a kid, you just, or at least I did. I you just think that that's uh, everybody normal. Like everybody has good poop days and bad poop days, and it is relatively normal right i mean there's not the average american this is what happens they just have some days their stool is a a a mess and loose and then other days it's solid and it's nice or they have none or none right and they just think that that's normal so i think even being a kid into exercise um, and trying to build muscle and reading all the magazines they just don't uh muscle building and fat loss type of conversations don't talk a lot about gut health. Like that didn't come till way later. Oh my God. It, it didn't happen till recently. Yeah. So, Nobody talked yeah, about so that. Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. until, you know, not that long ago did I really start evaluating like the way I, w- the way I pooped and like how much that ha- was a reflection of how I ate over the last 24 hours. And once you start to pay attention and you start to make, it's pretty obvious. I mean, mm. There's a, when I am eating really, really clean, I mean, dialed, um, you, I've got great stool. I mean, it's, uh, it, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, Instagram it's, worth it. It is nice. Yeah. You've yeah. seen it. Right. Yeah. So it's, uh, forgot to flush, you yeah. know, so it's, it's great. Right. But then when you go off and I decide to, you know, have a burger and fries, or I decide to have pizza or I decide to have ice cream, um, you know, you pay for it. And I think that uh, how much you abuse uh, those things and how much you consume d- dictates how bad the aftermath it is. It is funny, though, after you become aware, and maybe this is an adult thing as you get older, but it, there's almost nothing more satisfying. You know what mm. I mean? You wake up in the morning and it's a healthy one. You're like, yeah, that went smooth. Yeah, you're like, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, everything's going great so far. <laughs> From, you totally. know, from, from what I, when I was when I was younger, one of the worst things that I did, I think back, I'm like, man, I wasn't even a stoner. It was just I, I ate this for some reason. 
I would get pizza, all meat, so it'd have all the meat on it. Yeah. And then I would di- I'd ranch. Hold I'd put ranch all over the pizza. Yeah. And eat it like that. Yeah. Oh my God. You know what that would do to me right now if I ate that? <sighs> oh yeah, that'd tear me up. I would explode. Yeah. You guys would have to do the podcast uh, by uh, yourself. Oh, huge yeah. increase in downloads. Yeah. Dude, I've been 100%. watching. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 100% increase. <laughs> yeah. My pup exploded. <laughs> they got rid of that guy who talks too much. Yeah. Dude, um, I've been watching this series on Netflix called uh, Alone. Have yeah. you guys seen this? Yeah, that's yeah, been around for a long time. Yeah, uh, I'm always I always bring up some shit right. that's old. No, I like, Have like, you guys heard of The Simpsons? It, it like reiterates what we <laughs> yeah. talk about. Yeah. What what season are you on? The uh, Simpsons. What are the only one that's on there? It's like oh, the so, last. So Netflix just dropped the first season, right? Isn't that what they did, or did they pick up where? Well, it they all on? went to the Arctic. That's all I know. So oh, they're all in the Arctic. That's season one. I think it's season six. I thought it was like a- Did Netflix go pick it up at six? Yeah, I'm pretty yes, sure. I think he's right. Because it's been on regular cable for five plus seasons. Has yeah, it? no, they're because they talk about like what they learned from watching other uh, yes. contestants. That's interesting that Netflix would- So I'm really curious about this. Maybe someone can DM and tell me how this works. Like, So this this is becoming like a- comp- We see this with Cobra Kai. Exactly. Right? So these uh, Netflix- They're buying hit shows. Yeah. Netflix goes, and I'm assuming acquires these shows mm-hmm. after they are on somebody else's platform. Mm-hmm. And in the case of like Cobra Kai, and maybe even alone- uh, a lot of people don't know about it. It's on basic TV. Maybe if you don't, you weren't into that stuff, you didn't really watch it. Also, now it's on Netflix and it explodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it's crazy to watch, and I didn't realize how long they actually last. So they drop them off in the wilderness with m- minimal stuff, mm-hmm. and then they're out there for like months, n- doing nothing, living off of whatever. Yeah. It's crazy. The there was one guy who was like a military expert at survival. The the shelter this guy built from just the trees and shit around him it was like a legit like I'd live in there. Oh, I know. Did you see that one? Uh, yeah, uh, I saw one of the guys' shelters. That that's the one where you just, insulated it and stuff. Yeah, Dude, it was the like whole thing was had the uh, it was hella organized looking the moss and stuff that's covered like and yeah and like insulated the whole thing and I was like oh that's actually pretty comfy. Dude, looking. and and he he left. Spoiler alert, right? He leaves yeah. because he was he couldn't handle the boredom and being away from his kids. He had plenty of food. Plenty of shelter. That's I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he was doing well too, and it, it was just like he it got to a point where he's like, "I'm not enjoying this anymore" or whatever, and then he just decided to go. I was like, "What, dude?" And then the, the animals that they have to eat and stuff. That one yeah. guy, this one guy, uh, killed uh, what was it, a moose? Yeah. And he brings it back and carves it all up. And, and now, I mean, obviously, you got a moose, you're set for a little while. Yeah. Right. Then you, well, so you got to worry about wolves and everything else. Dude, the so wolver- he, Wolverines ate the the fat. Wolverine took away the fat, yeah. and then he had to kill the Wolverine. Yeah, which that thing looked disgusting. Yeah, that's a cool. Gnarly. That's actually a cool like uh, part though, because I, I don't know where you're at. And again, spoiler alert here, because I've actually seen that season already. Is um, you have this moose, and you think, oh, he's guaranteed he's going to win, right? Not he, if you don't get fat, right? Not if you don't have the fat, and it just shows you that even if you have this really lean protein, like that's not ideal either. There was a, yeah. I don't remember the name of it, but trappers and hunters in North America mm-hmm. used to starve from this, and it's something about the, the name of it was like rabbit something because yeah, because it's from rabbits because they're so lean. Yeah, they were able to catch lots of rabbits, so they could catch hares. But they would literally go insane and starve to death because they're too lean. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't able to get enough fat. And yeah. I don't remember. There's an actual name for this type of starvation. Where and you can can you imagine going through something like that where you're you're eating, oh, yeah. but you're starving. I think and they get so excited about it because that's like a big deal. Like you finally got some protein. But you know, yeah, it's not going to satiate uh, your your body the way it needs to. You know, you know what I think it's about called protein poisoning. Uh, it's col- colloquially they called it rabbit starvation, mm-hmm. mal de caribou, or fat starvation. Yeah, dude. Because, you know, fat and protein are essential. By the way, if there's ever a debate, if you ever have a debate with any of your friends, if you're listening right now, about like the, the you know, how great veganism is, and, okay, no problem. You want to be vegan, it's fine. But for sure, it would not exist. No. If, if, if it weren't times. for modern <clears throat> grocery stores, uh, that you'd was be a, fucked. That was a point I was just going to make is I, I find it really, the thing I find most interesting about the show is just to, to highlight how uh, humans are opportunists. Yeah, it'll be bugs, it'll be rabbits, it'll be caribou, it'll be freaking vegetables, berries. They'll eat whatever to survive, and we probably evolved this way 
most of human well, history. Well, I think it's, I like these shows uh, in, in Naked and Afraid and things like that and like these survival shows just to kind of like regain perspective. I think we've lost a lot of that because of uh, the way that we can now get it so easily, uh, you know, to, you appreciate, uh, you know, these, uh, these sources of meat and like all, like you really have to like hunt and find like, like these berries are even edible and won't kill you. Well, you two know? things came apparent to me on that. One is how far removed we are from our food. Because as I'm watching this, I'm watching them, like the guy killed a, a wolverine with an axe. Like he had to go up and literally hack it to death or they trap animals. Part of me is like, oh man, would I be able to yeah, do that? Brutal. And, and then I think to myself, I eat meat every day. It's like a processed food to me though. I, oh, I get it out of the bro, package. if you were starving, you bet your ass you'd be able to yeah. do that, dude. Oh, it's yeah. survival. Survival the fittest for sure. I, that's the other thing that I think it highlights is that we we we... We're so picky and, oh, it doesn't taste good. You know what's so funny is that it's because we're so oversaturated. We mm. consume so much on a regular basis that nobody even has an, the faintest idea of what even close to starvation feels like. People are like, oh, my God, I'm so hungry. Yeah, I haven't yeah. eaten since lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been four hours today. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah. you don't even know. Like if you, And imagine, that's why I love, like, and we haven't talked about this in a while. Like, you know, we used to talk about how great it was to fast for two or three days. It's a great perspective builder. It is a great perspective mm -hmm. builder. It's amazing too how amazing all food tastes when you haven't had anything. Oh, yeah. When you haven't yeah. had anything for two days and you eat some Brussels sprouts, like it's like, like a little celebration. Oh, it cells is. And oh, that, give you. you see that with them on the show. Oh yeah, the guy catches a, a squirrel and then he's cooking up the head in yeah. a soup and he's eating it and it's like he's orgasming. He's like, Dude, oh. he shot it. The arrow went through its ears. Yeah, I don't know how, how crazy that, was that? Uh, I was like, oh my God, that was a great show. Well, it may be likely, because if you kind of read about our theories on evolution, it's it may be likely that, because humans are, we are the apex predator. We are the apex predator on Earth. And it, one of the main driving factors for our intelligence probably was to make us uh, amazing hunters, to organize together. We've got eyes in the front of our head so we can observe movement and see what we need to do. We became amazing tool hunters probably so we could hunt. And this is what drove our evolution initially. And so, I mean, you know, eating animals is kind of just, it's kind of what we do, yeah. you know. But the other thing too, watching about watching the show, is they are killing animals and they are eating them, but the respect that they have. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. a lot of them like stop and like are so grateful and thankful that they're going to be able. to... I mean, that's the they, that's the irony of not killing your own food is you lose connection to it and all the value. I mean, I go to the grocery store or mm -hmm. I get my food from the you know the mail or whatever. I look at it; it's it's beef. You know what I mean? It's a piece of meat, and I throw it in the barbecue, and it's not a big deal. I didn't have to kill it. I didn't have to look into the animal's eyes. I didn't have to yeah. hunt it. You know, you I just got to dress it, prepare it. Nothing. Like, oh, so you completely lose respect and value for the food, and so then we start to treat animals poorly, probably as a result of the fact that we're totally disconnected. Because right. when you see people raise their own animals for food, mm -hmm. they treat them differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. They really do. I know in, in Italy, I have you know family members that have uh, essentially farms. Mm -hmm. And the way that they raise the food that they kill to eat is like they raise them incredibly. They make sure that they're healthy and that they're clean and they have good, you know, place to sleep and they feed them really well. Oh, I remember when we used to when I first started working the dairy when I was a kid, like the my boss would like so they had all the cows were all named. They came in, you talked to them by name, you pet them, you had they had music that was like easy going that you play. I mean, they literally cared about all that stuff because like, listen, when you do that, you watch how much more milk they produce and how much healthier they stay. Right. So they pay attention They're not to stressed out. They do, they do. So they pay attention to all that and they care about that because it's their livelihood. You it bet is. your ass you would if that's how you survive. Now, did you did they play music? I heard that they play music for cows and make them make more milk. Yeah. Is that true? That's what I just said. That's no, what, what's the music they play? Oh, I don't you know what? I think that, you know, it just Yanni? <laughs> no, I, I mean I was playing at the Zamfir. When I that's where my country and, yeah. came, comes from. I, play, I listen to country music, but then which I don't think is like a, a like anything related to like oh wow you know you know you get you know, the whole your dog dies you get a divorce and I, I don't think that's great music for you know, <laughs> cows. You know, some sour milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cows all depressed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's more like the just the sound right and the melody of it, like hearing hearing music that's like you know in a rhythm right. I think it's yeah. more of that than it is actually yeah. the word. That the, Dude, the speak, song is speaking saying. of milk, like speed metal uh, jet, <laughs> <laughs> produces lightning milk. Yeah. Uh, speaking of milk, Jessica and I took a, a breastfeeding course uh, last night. We took this class where they talk about all the, you know, it's crazy. Um, the more I learn about breast milk and the whole process around it, the more fascinated yeah. I get with it. You know, a woman who is has milk, right? She's got a baby. 
all she has to do is think about her baby or hear the baby cry or anything like that. And then she's, she gets that let down where the milk wants just the thought of it. Have you had this happen to Katrina once or twice? And have you ever heard of stories like this? Like, uh, let's say it's been, um, and Jessica will probably experience this. Uh, she, it's been a couple hours since she's breastfed. So she's, she's filled all up, right? She's, a, she's in, or engorged and, uh, you at a grocery store and a baby cries. Yeah. yeah right. Somebody else's kid. And then all of a sudden she yeah. starts lactating. Like, no way. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that happens. It's wild, dude. Oh, You're man. like, isn't that weird? Are the body just like senses? Well, I guess it's like a, you know, you can think about something, get a boner kind of similar, right? I guess. Where you get that body but, reaction. Yeah, kind of. And I that's guess. a weird connection. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, I have so many mixed feelings right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Hey, I read a good, a really interesting article about the, the, the title of the article was, let me find it real quick, um, uh, Fitness and the Economics, or Secret Gyms and the Economics of Prohibition. What? Ooh. So right now they're calling it the COVID Prohibition Era because so many businesses are either forced to close or there's regulations forced on them that make it basically essentially impossible for them to run a profit. Right. And so this this reporter is doing this investigation and going around and finding all these gyms that are open secretly. Just like they did, just like when when alcohol prohibition existed and there were speakeasies where they go up to the, there's a garage door, it's half open. Mm. You got to know the right thing to say. You go in there, they let you in, you pay your fee, and you do your workout. And this this journalist is saying that they're all over the place on top of other businesses too, like hairstylists and stuff like that. Well, I think this confirms our theory then, right? I mean, that's the natural progression or transition for the the kind of more – a uh, private gym with a higher rate because you better believe if they're putting themselves out there and they're yeah. running black market just like you know, prohibition times if they're doing that they're charging a premium rate or else you're a moron you're not a very good business operator if you're not charging a premium for people that are to, uh, encouraging you to break mm-hmm. the law so I guarantee that those people that they're getting to come in the gym are paying a premium rate to have access to this underground gym which once things finally hopefully lift this is this to me and I think you guys agree is going to be the gym industry. That yeah. I think it's going to be these these very uh, exclusive type of gyms that charge a premium rate. They're going to have to increase the customer service and the value they provide for that. And it's going to look more like what it did 20 plus years ago and it, much more, a lot more expensive to have a membership. This is a great time for me to correct what I said in the last podcast about Equinox. I guess uh, they do have locations still open and uh, like they, they were shut down during when they needed to be shut down, but mm. uh, they have made a lot more moves on their, uh, their mobile front and, and trying to compete in that arena with like, uh, I guess they own soul cycle. And mm. so they're kind of putting that version up, but uh, yeah, they're doing the the premium model still, but uh, they're still kind of speculating whether or not they're going to go uh, uh, bankrupt. And so they're, mm-hmm. they're they're kind of seeing if that model is going to have well, staying power or not. And it's it looks like the, they're doing okay right now. Well, so here, so here, this is a wonderful time to study the economic effects or the unintended consequences of prohibition. Okay, because now we have markets. That before, not that long ago, right? Like you know, six months ago or whatever, were totally open, which now are are partially or fully uh, prohibited by law. So now you can witness some of the unintended consequences. One of them being um, more people breaking the law than did before. So you're getting a bunch of people who normally wouldn't break the law now are starting to break the law. So you get a, a black market that's created. So that's one unintended consequence. Another one is higher prices. Because uh, lack of competition, because what happens, you get less competition, and then the people who are willing to take the risk now can charge a bit of a premium, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're willing to be in that gray or black market, they could charge a little more. Here's the other unattended consequence that always happens from prohibition. I'm interested to see if this happens, uh, if they continue to push this with even with gyms. You tend to see more corruption and violence because. When there's a dispute over payment or billing or something like that, when it's a open legal market, you go through the legal channels. You go to court, uh, you, you sue them. <laughs> when it's a black market, <laughs> members are going to take advantage of them because it's all yeah under what, black market. Well, let's say you have somebody that somebody takes advantage. Will, yeah. You know, someone takes advantage of you and uses your gym or I mean, whatever. That makes sense. Doesn't pay. You can't take them to court. Can you have to hire muscle. Maybe yeah. maybe there's more intimidation. <laughs> Getting there's, roughed up for not making your gym for membership. not going to the gym, dude. <laughs> it's like not paying your drug you dealer. Miss, yeah, yeah, did you miss your gym bill for two months in a row? Somebody knocks on your door, dude. Yeah. 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 Big ass Italian guy. Fuck <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey. yeah, roided out guy. Yeah, I saw you doing deadlifts. Come so, here, sit yeah. down. 
down. We have a talk. Real quick. Very, yeah, you're gonna do a thousand <laughs> reps of deadlifts now. We're paying us back. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I ever tell you what happened to us? So uh, when we were in Vegas. Never mind the story. Random story, right? So we were in Vegas. Uh, God, I got to be. I want to say 23 to 25 ish. Oh, that's gonna be a good story. Uh, yeah, right. The stupid days. Okay, so I'm there. We're at uh, the Hard Rock, and we are. I forget what the name of the nightclub is inside there. But we bought, we had two VIP tables. There was like twenty of us guys that were out there, <clears throat> and all wearing your Ed Hardy shirt. <laughs> totally, that's that's about the right time, right? About I'm sure we were for Luka sure. Shills yeah, and yeah. Or I was at, maybe I was on my Tommy Bahama linen kick around oh, that time. No. So, yeah, 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 linen yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah, dude, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> you, had, you had linen shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on. I, I did. Like, I went through like, like a pimp. I went through like a three year kick where I was rocking Tommy Bahama. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I think it was because it's like it was like an old man thing. You had to have money. I like to be different than everybody my age and so i was like <laughs> way ahead right? oh my shirt yeah yeah, yeah this is totally. magnum no PI. i was rocking solids okay it was a solid shirt but okay, it was still okay. you know the baggy linens right, right so right. anyways that's beside the point uh so we get two vip tables which uh, that in itself in vegas uh, anybody that's got a table knows it's expensive right i mean you're looking at a minimum probably about a thousand dollars each table which <clears throat> so we're there right it's Early in the night, 20 guys, it's a bachelor party. And, uh, you know, I, I forget what guy, you know, you know, opened the table originally. And then the way it works, you open it up. And then at the end of the night, you, you know, they let, did you, they'll keep serving you drinks and bringing you more bottles as long as you keep asking for it. And we all agreed. Everybody in that group of 20, everybody makes pretty good money. So we just, let's, we're going to go hard. And then at the end of the night, we'll divvy it up. Well, you know, a bunch of young guys drinking alcohol and stuff like that. Each guy gets obviously distracted by the opposite sex and then leaves, really? you know, starting from 9 p.m. all the way till about 2. Well, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I, I've been long gone. I think I took off around 11 or so, and I'm back at our hotel room. I get the, the phones ringing at like, I don't know, 2.30, 3 in the morning. And, I, and, it, and I, the group of guys that I'm with, uh, there's only a couple I know really well. I don't know everybody that well. And I, I roll over and I, I grab the phone and like I kind of sit up and I look and there's like there's dudes passed out face down on the floor. There's multiple people in the beds. We have these we have a dual suites uh, over there and there's a lot of drunk people that are completely passed out. And I pick it up and it's one of our buddies and he's like, "You got to come down here. You got to come get me." They're telling me to pay the bill and I don't have this. I don't have this much money. It's like five thousand something dollars oh, for the bill. And uh, I come down. Break my legs. Yeah, I, I come down there with. I gra I wake up one of the other guys, and I'm like, "Hey, we got to go pick up our buddy." I was like, "They've they've got it. They're holding him down at uh, Hard Rock." And we show up. This is like now. It's like I don't know. I think it's like four in the morning by this time. And the club nightclub's completely closed. Everybody's completely. It's completely empty. And we're like, we come in. We're like, "Hey, we're looking for our buddy." This or that. And we go in the back alley, and he's he's sitting on the curb. And there's three like fucking muscle dudes standing over him, like <laughs> waiting for us to come and like rescue him and pay the bill. Like I have no idea what would have happened to him. Oh, dude, Vegas is borderline. They don't mess around. Right. That's why that's why I brought the story. It's up. borderline. It Remind me of that. It's not quite completely black market, but that's how they were going to get their money. They were not going to call the cops. I didn't seem like that. Well, was Well, back happen. in the day, apparently. Apparently, yeah. uh, in the six seventies, I think sixty seventies, and maybe even eighties, uh, the mob oftentimes oh, yeah. ran their security and stuff. And so, if people were cheating, mm -hmm. they take them in the back. And <laughs> isn't that still? Isn't that still happen? I don't know. Uh, I've seen a lot less. You know, it got more corporate, but yeah, it definitely was a lot more gangster. Yeah, back the day. definitely. Yeah, I still feel like the the, the I mean, big money elements the, there. The still. big money that own the companies, like, or own the casinos, or own that. I think there's still a lot of that going on. I think it's on. evolved. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it's evolved too. I don't think it's all gangster, but I mean that just highlights it ain't it ain't all corporate. That's no. for damn sure because no, that, no. that wouldn't be like a they're H getting their money. That's not the HR process. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's not like the, hey, if someone doesn't pay their bill, we do this, then we do that. It's like oh, I know how to get our money if we don't pay our bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not take going this anywhere. Yeah, take this one of these twenty guys out in the back, and then we'll go let them call his friends, and then we'll get them all yeah, back we'll here. Sir, organs. Yeah. Put yeah. your head in the spice, yeah. and then yeah. we'll see what happens, yeah. Yeah. dude. Uh, more cool news. Uh, NASA made an announcement that they are speculating that Venus may have some life. Wait. What? Now, yeah. how... Okay, so is this one of the moons that goes around? Is there any moons that go around? Uh, no, no. Okay, so I'm going to look it up. So, yeah, let me know. So it, they found... How far is Venus for us? So, you have to tell me here. I don't uh, know. How far is Venus? Yeah, yeah. Like... It's like a couple hours. What kind of drive is it? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of drive is it for? It's pretty. I mean, I know it's, the, it's, the it's, moon's really far. I got, Mars is crazy far. How far is Venus? Venus is further than the moon. I think it's closer to the sun, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe yeah. Doug can. In relation to Mars, how far is it? 
Um, I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's 91 actually, million miles from here, though. Well, okay. So, okay. It, it, the things that I've read, it, it, ta- it would take, uh, is it 18 months, I believe, to get out to Mars? Something like that? I don't think, yeah. I don't know. A long time. I expect you to know these nerdy no, questions. No, dude. Geez, you got is... me caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm trying Come to. On, Bill Nye. I'm trying to figure this out, how far Venus is. I, I have yeah. no idea, but maybe. If it's, closer, can... if it's closer than Mars, why aren't we going there first? Uh, because I don't think you can land on there. I think it's a hot it's ass. It's gas. Yeah, I, right? It's a hot ass. So 91 million miles away. Okay, it's Venus. Uh, which is pretty far. So let's see where Mars is. Yeah. Mars, uh, 41 million oh, miles Oh, so away. it's. So it's twice as far, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's twice as far. So you're talking like years to even get there. Yes, but we've sent- so who cares? I think we've sent probes. <laughs> Haven't we sent probes out there? Anyway. Yeah. So here's a, It's here, got to be probes or the, uh, what, like a Hubble was able to seize things? So or? here's what they did. They found the presence of airborne phosphine, which is something that you tend to see that bacteria produce oh, on Earth. So phosphine- farts. Phosphine comes from a bac- bacteria on Earth, and the fact that we've detected it in their atmosphere, they are now saying that there may be uh, that there may be bacteria on Mars, which is I don't know if that's a good idea to go touch or check out. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, you think coronavirus is bad? Yeah, I feel like we have to handle Mars first. I mean, it's half the distance, and that's already really long. Oh, look, that shows you how long to get there, Doug. Yeah, but the ooh, that was the uh, which one was that? That was a, the Mariner two. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? And it, it took a hundred nineteen uh, sixty two. 1962. Man, we used to do some cool stuff in space. Oh, it's not its not as long as I thought it was. thats It took three months for that probe to get there. Well, this is interesting because I thought NASA was uh, sort of taking a back seat to all these private companies now, like sending everybody up into space, but they're still researching quite a bit. Huh? Well, the, the motivation, the real hard motivation back in the day for NASA was the, 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 was the arms race. It was the space race, right? You had the, the Soviets... And you had the U.S., and we were the two superpowers of the world, and we were always competing. And one way you can flex to another mus- uh, another superpower with your rocket technology <laughs> is literally by flying to the moon and going out in space. And, and so that right. became – and it was also a sense of national pride. Um, so that's why we did so much stuff back in those days. And after that happened, that stopped, we kind of – you know, nobody really is interested in – landing and it works for these private companies which right. that'll be interesting and then you see space force kind of uh, get created uh and, and really what what's the main fear for that is is other countries that have all their satellites uh everywhere and like what the potential is for like weaponry and whatnot well you know there's a big treaty uh between the main powers of the uh, of the of the world that say you cannot build a base on, Mo- on the uh, moon. moon yeah on the moon yeah, because think about that. That would be a crazy military <laughs> advance, uh, uh, advantage. You, know, De- death you, have a ro- yeah. you have a rocket base <laughs> on the moon. Oh, <laughs> you know dude. Yeah. The true Death Star. Yeah. Well, I know. Like Star Wars hit it on the head again, Justin. Yeah. I know. I'm telling you. like, uh, There's so much in there, you guys. Yeah, oh. it looks, look, son. It's a full moon. What's that coming down over? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> dude, so you guys know that flying cars are now almost a thing. What do you mean almost a thing? Well, so it's in trial phase, but I've actually seen videos now in Japan. They have a legit flying car that looks, it, it looks kind of like a drone okay, basically yeah. with the technology, but like it's a one, it's a, it's a single seater and they, they set up like all these nets around. So it had to like go through this obstacle course. So it could like levitate and then it kind of goes through each one of these gates and it had to pass all these uh, sort of standards for it. But it just makes it look like that is actually possible now. Like it looks like something that could could uh, be a thing. I mean, uh, I saw a prototype. I thought it was Uber who I uh, that sh- had like a prototype of what that would look like. It's exactly what it looked like. It looked like it had it was like a you know four propeller drone. That mm-hmm. I think theirs was like a two or a four seater. Uh, but I don't see why it's that far off. I mean, look look at the drones. Have you guys seen some of these badass yeah. drones? Yeah. I mean, you have drones now that go up and almost fly themselves. They're they're dummy proof. I mean, you literally can lock them into something and then they use GPS and coordinations to yeah. fly, yep. fly. I think for- it's just the infrastructure of like, how do you create all these new flight paths and like, uh, you know, what, what all the standards are going to be. And because can you imagine just everybody all of a sudden now having access to that and then crashing into your well, house? Well, Elon too. So I, uh, Elon Musk did this whole thing on that where he talked about flying cars and he said it's, it's, it's unlikely because of the noise. Right. That's what I was... 
That's what I was fact, but it didn't make a lot of noise. This one didn't make a no, lot of noise. No, no, it was pretty quiet. Because of how low they would have to fly, is that why? Yeah, just imagine a bunch of flying cars. All Okay, you got cars driving in front of us. Imagine flying drone type car all all around us. Yeah, it would have to be much. You know what? I was you know ran, here's a random fact. I was reading a real estate law last night, and what, did you guys know that uh, you, when you buy a property, you also own the air above it, and that you can actually sell that. What? Wait, how do you sell the air above? So it? you can sell that. Like, so for example, so you can sell us a floor. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an, no, no, no. I'll give you an ex- extreme example of that. Okay, so somebody, rich billionaire, buys a you know a, you know high rise penthouse, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know suite, right? And he's got the beautiful view in front of him in, of the city. He's got the optimal view. Below him is uh, you know one story stores, right? Like say fifteen you know stores, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. All those people that have those stores actually have the rights to the air above them. Now, if they want to, they can sell those rights. Because let's say this billionaire comes down and says, "Listen," uh, f- goes to these seven owners and says, "I want to buy the air rights above your building." That will now allow him to hold those rights, so no one can ever build up. But huh. if somebody else were, let's say they they demolish that and they were to sell sell that to somebody who wants to build a building to go straight up, they'd have the, to buy not only the, the footprint but then the air. How rise. bizarre! Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing. What about um, down? You know, like down. No, through so the, you so you can also soil. you can also sell that, right? So you're you're you're, you're uh, you have your I forget what it's called. There's a there's an acronym for it, but it's like mineral, oil, gas, or something like rights that you have. Mm-hmm. So you have you have when you buy your land and property, you have the rights down and up mm-hmm. plus the actual property itself. Itself. And you can actually sell each of those individually. So if somebody wants to like mine your your property, but you own the the mm-hmm. house still, the building, the air, and everything uh-huh. like that, you can sell that. Same way you would have if you had water on there or something like that. You could actually that's l- super fascinating. You know, it reminds me, and I don't know if Doug, you might want to look this up, but like there was it was Coca Cola or it was like a big major company like that that was trying to uh, basically like create like a laser uh, advertisement. So they would like project it up. Into the airspace, so you would like see that, uh, you know, in the sky, and they, they would advertise you in the sky. Oh, wow. and I think they like blocked that from happening, obviously. Yes, well, I ass- because I cannot imagine walking, yeah, around. how distracting and annoying would that yeah, be? You're just looking at the sky, and there's all these ads, yeah, just floating above you. Oh, it'd be horrible. Oh. <laughs> First question is from the free range chicken How would you compare calisthenics to weight training for building muscle, improving health, and general wellness? Well, okay, so first off, you want to understand that re- the umbrella of resistance training covers calisthenics as well as weights or bands or machines. It's a style of training in which you're using resistance with the sole goal of building strength and building muscle. Okay, so when we compare calisthenics to weight training, they do look different. However, you can manipulate your body with calisthenics to, prov- to to create some pretty high-tension, heavy-style exercises, especially when you use a tool like a suspension trainer. When you have a suspension trainer, you now have uh, a whole bunch of different exercises that open up to you, and all of them are muscle-building. Now, some of the best muscle-building exercises are uh, ones with barbells, but there's also some body weight bi- uh, muscle building exercises that are up there with some of the best ones. I mean, a pull up, for example, is a body weight exercise, and that could be considered calisthenics, and that's extremely a, valuable. A dip, a dip yeah. is another. A handstand, a handstand push up, up yeah. for example, is another phenomenal so exercise. The, it's a it's, tough one. It's all resistance training, and if you're, unless you're a specific type of athlete or your goals are very, very, very specific, like. You're a bodybuilder. You compete in bodybuilding, or you're a power lifter, or you're a kettlebell, you know, uh, expert, or whatever. Your best bet is to use a mix of different forms of resistance training, and that what that will do is that'll develop a very balanced, uh, aesthetic-looking physique for most people. So I love bodyweight exercises in combination yeah. with with weights uh, yeah. and suspension trainers are your best bet with that. I way. think yeah, if you if you think suspension trainers and then trying to find, you know, more ways to progress through that. If you look at there was a, a big trend for this for a while with like those bar athletes and oh, yeah. uh, you know the calisthenic kings and and people like that that were really kind of showing a whole new wave of of intensity with you know that they were adding to these uh, body weight type exercises and using the bar for all kinds of different moves and things. Uh, so it's 
there is a valid way to to really progress just by using your own body weight. However, I think uh, a lot of people are more familiar with you know weights uh, uh, and how to program that. This is kind of another thing that's a little bit more uh, 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 niche and unique. I mean, if you're a coach, okay, if you're a good coach, um, this belongs in every routine. Whether you uh, intermittently have uh, body weight exercises built into their weight training routine, or you actually have phases where you go through where you make your client, you know, spend two, three, four weeks of just doing body weight exercises. No matter how you you drum it up, it belong as a good coach, it belongs somewhere in almost everybody's routine, unless you have a very specific goal, like Sal said. And by specific, it's like sports specific, because even if you have a specific goal, like I want to lose 30 pounds or I want to build 10 pounds of muscle, those belong in there just mm -hmm. for overall health and longevity. So if you're a coach, this has got to be something you you intermittently put into the routine or make sure you always keep somewhat these body weight exercises. If you're a consumer or a listener and, you're, and you build your own routine, uh, it's important that you do these. It's important that you incorporate them. There's too much benefit uh, in training body weight type of training calisthenics to not do them at all whatsoever, even if you think that your main goal is to build muscle and that that's not the fastest way potentially to build muscle. Um, if it's something you never do, it absolutely is. It's just like the novelty that we talk about, the importance of that uh, for the body to adapt and keep changing. If you're always using the same machines or always doing the same exercises and training in the, the same modality and you never utilize some of these tools like this, like a suspension trainer or doing a calisthenic type of phase, you're really missing out on a lot of benefits. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you if you work out primarily with weights and let's say you did, let's say you signed up for MAP suspension. So you, now MAP suspension is all suspension training. You can expect to gain some muscle. You should expect to gain a little bit of muscle mobility and different a different type of strength because yeah. it's a different type of resistance training. So uh, they're all all when you look at that whole umbrella again of resistance training, if we you know each one has its strengths and its weaknesses, but I think the point that we're making that's real important is don't limit yourself to one. Utilize all of them, and again, you'll develop a very balanced aesthetic functional physique from doing that. Next question is from Chris Frouts. You have $5,000 to spend on a home gym. What do you buy? Wow. $5,000, you could get a, a lot. sick sit-up. Yes. An amazing setup for- Especially in these days. Yeah. I would start with, uh, number one, I would start with a a rack. And now, I you know, barbells and dumbbells are important too. Of course, we're going to get there. But a good rack allows you to, to really do a lot of stuff with your free weights. Because yeah. here's the thing with free weights. You have an almost infinite supply of exercises that you can do with free weights. That's one of the things I love about them. I'm not just getting a rack, though. I'm getting a PRX rack because I want something that actually folds away and that doesn't kill the space that I may potentially be using for my car or for an office. And also room. stable because uh, I've worked out with a lot of racks that are made for home gyms because mm -hmm. there's commercial racks. Those are the ones you go in the big gyms and use. Typically very stable. The home gym ones, I've used a few of them that are a little rickety, and that's okay for the first few months or year, but if you plan on using this for years, you want something stable, especially if you're racking a barbell on there with, with weight. The PRX racks are very, very stable, and they don't use up much space at all. In fact, if you went on PRX for under $5,000, you could get, uh, you'd get you'd be able to get a rack, barbell, Dumbbells, plates, bench. No, you would. So here's, uh, so you would literally be able to get like. So uh, hopefully, if this is a listener, I don't know if you follow us on Instagram or not, but you know, I definitely know I have. I think you guys have too. Posted several pictures of our uh, our trucky PRX setup, right? Um, that was more expensive than five thousand, but the most expensive part of it is the dumbbells. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you wanted to save money and I was on a budget, I would get everything that we have, yeah. and then and adjust, multiple adjust, benches, and then like an adjustable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. We have multiple benches. We built a. We a bought platform. all the dumbbells. Yeah, we bought tons of dumbbells. We have enough to be able deadlifting seven hundred yeah. pounds. Like we have, a, we have more than you need. You can and get it, away with one barbell too. Yeah, you know, exactly. To two, be a yeah, so we overkilled that, and still wasn't that much over five thousand dollars. If you were to do like an adjustable dumbbells, you could literally get almost everything else that we have for that setup for that price. Oh yeah, like the folding rack is going to be between between a thousand or fourteen hundred bucks. I think when I looked yeah. on their site, um, and that's without our discount. So you got that. One barbell, some plates, uh, adjustable dumbbells, um, your bench, and then if you want to go real crazy, you can add a pulley adjustment, which uh, or attachment, I should say, and then you're 
you're pretty much set. I've been so so. Here's the thing. I've been working out for a long time. For mo for the last I don't know 15 plus years that I've been working out, 90 percent of my workouts are with what I just said: mm -hmm. a rack, barbell, dumbbells, adjustable bench, and a cable attachment, which is very basic. It's like and I barely ever use it. That's it. Yeah. That's all I've used, and I've and I trust me, I'm, I am at no loss for exercise variety. You know, I can do a, I, I do different exercises all the time. Well, especially if it's in your home, you want to have things look a certain way and be organized. And so it's just nice that they have like wall attachments for all these things like rubber bands or, you know, even if you have a kettlebell, there's a way to kind of like display those in, in a way where you, you can walk in. Everything's organized. Mm -hmm. It's not in your way. So, uh, you know, it's come a long way, man, because before that, it's like you would just have everything resting on the ground at your house. Mm -hmm. Like there'd be a bench maybe like outside that you would use. It's all rusty it's and you know so as far as like the options go there's really a way that you can look at you know kind of picking your essentials and then organizing it and having you know a place for everything which uh i i, I have found like it's just been a, a game changer for me well that's the the biggest difference today is that exactly that like back you know just 10 15 years ago if you wanted an at-home gym spot you had to have the room the extra room you either had to have an extra room in your house or you now no longer can park your garage in that space because you've got all this equipment in it. The beauty of the PRX stuff is, I mean, we could, you could still pull mine and your truck in that garage. I yeah. mean, that's crazy. Those yeah, things, what is it? How much of it off? I mean, you're, you're literally talking no, about- No, not even that, dude. You're talking You're talking less than a foot off the wall. It's yeah. like six inches off the wall. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. And that, so the, those trucks are, the, both Justin and my truck are, are, are really long because they have the extra cab Excessive. on them. And they- Super long. And you have to have a, 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 <laughs> a decent sized garage to even fit them in. And we're I think we're only a few inches from the, the front and the back and we could still pull the truck in with that rack and everything in there because it totally folds up against the wall and all the weights go up against yeah, the wall. Yeah, you yeah. know, that, that earlier when I brought up that article about um, the prohibition gyms, and all, it also talked about the explosion of at-home gym equipment. It's yeah. still climbing. Yeah. It is oh, still yeah. climbing. And it, my prediction, I think once people really experience what it's like to be consistent at home, a lot of people are not going to want to go and back there's to the some, gym. There's real cool videos out there too for some do-it-yourself things, added items. Like I, you know, was able to kind of research that and, and figure out how to make uh, a platform. And so if that's part of your programming, you know, and you can do that, there's ways to make that on the cheap uh, as well to accentuate, you know, the racks well, and everything. You, else you made you that have. for under three hundred bucks, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. If you were to buy that rack, and that's a legit platform. I oh, mean, that's, that's a, a really just, nice just horse mats and, and, and you know plywood. I don't. Even, so here's the so I love that platform, but. But in my garage, I don't even have a platform. All I put down were the horse mats. Yeah, so and horse I, mats is just fine. And I have the bumper plates. Yeah, so if yeah. I drop the barbell, you know, my 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 garage is concrete yeah. plus the horse mat, horse mats to prevent chipping or whatever. Not a problem. But yeah, the the platform you made is be It's amazing. It's really really nice and. With, uh, under three hundred bucks. Yeah, year. no. If you have yeah. a budget like five thousand, you can build a, a very nice. Oh, some damage with that. You'll have yeah. a, you'll have an amazing home gym. Yep. Next question is from Matt Ammo. How do stimulants affect the anabolic process in recovery? Oh, what a great question, because this is one of the answers that irritates people because it depends. Um, if So stimulants, what do they do to the body, right? They stimulate the central nervous system. A uh, classic stimulant would be caffeine. You take caffeine, it produces an increase in catecholamine production. It makes you feel more alert, more energized. In a healthy state, if you're healthy, um, it's not going to negatively affect uh, hormones like testosterone. Might actually improve insulin sensitivity in some people. It could fuel good workouts, reduce your uh, increase your pain tolerance, so your workouts can be a little bit harder. Um, might have some brain health properties, and so in that case, if you're healthy, nothing wrong with stimulants. The problem becomes. Uh, or, or happens when your health is in the wrong, it's, it's the wrong kind of health to throw stimulants at. If you are not getting good sleep, mm -hmm. if you have a lot of stress, if your testosterone levels are low as a result of all this, or you're a woman and your period is off because of this, or your, your progesterone estrogen feels off, your libido feels off, you're just in a bad state of health, stimulants just increase the stress that you place on your body. It could cause cortisol to come up even higher, although temporarily you probably feel good from that extra cortisol. It is not a good thing to throw on that fire. It's like gasoline on the fire. And when I work with clients mm. who, are, who are in this state of being, 
One of the first things I do is I wean them off of stimulants because the stimulants are making everything worse. So it really does depend. It's a problem for a lot of people. I mean, myself included, uh, in terms of like what that provides. I know how I feel after I'll have a stimulant or have some coffee. Uh, and I, what I've noticed is obviously the trends within our industry is to really cater to that into going into the workout. So it becomes ritualized where I have to have my pre-workout. I have to have this. And then it's not working as much, so I have to add more. And I mm -hmm. keep adding more and more. And then you start having real negative uh, results uh, uh, from that. And so, you know, you can really put yourself in a position where it's like, I'm so reliant on this uh, to, to produce these workouts for me, but now I'm just adding more stress and more things uh, that are, that are really like taking me in a downward uh, progression. I really don't think this was a big deal um, just 20 years ago. Uh, we, we now, we live in the, the Starbucks generation and the pre-workout generation. Like, you know, 20 plus years ago, I mean, it was coffee every now and then. And then there was probably a very small percentage of those people that even were probably drinking it on that regular of a basis. And I would probably argue that it wasn't a lot of the fitness people that were. were there was also the perception that coffee wasn't yeah. healthy, which right. kind of prevented people coffee, from overdoing Coffee, cigarettes combo. That yeah, was always exactly. The so it really wasn't in the health and fitness space like it is. And like anything else in, in, in the health and fitness space, we take something that has a little bit of benefit and good and we abuse the shit out of it until we find out like the unintended consequences. Yeah. And I think this is becoming more and more of a conversation that I've had to have in just the last five years than I had to have in the previous 15 years. And and I don't think it would have been that big of a deal, except for it's just become so accepted now. It's become so accepted to start your day off with your pot of coffee at home. Then you get to work and you get your Starbucks. And then you go to your, your, your before your pre-workout, if you didn't already guzzle down a rock star before. And then you have a pre-workout before you. Before you know it, you're, you're having 1,000 milligrams of caffeine every single day. And you've worked your way slowly up to that. That and you don't even realize how stimulated you are, how much it's affecting your sleep, how much it's it's affecting your recovery. But yeah, no, it, it can. And to you know, to your original point, so it does depend. Mm -hmm. It does depend on who I'm talking. Somebody who uses stimulants uh, judiciously and intermittently, probably not a big deal. Um, I try not to. I mean, I can't. I can't tell you. It's probably been. I want to say a month maybe or so since the last time I grabbed a pre-workout before, but I have coffee on a very regular basis almost every day in the morning, but I'm aware of that, right? That I, I want to intermittently use something that strong so I get the effects from it and then I, I don't get the adverse effects from having too much of it. What's the scientific term for adrenal fatigue? That they oh, HPA axis HPA, dysfunction. Right, yeah. yeah, that's where the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenals are just not communicating well. And if your hormones are off, uh, stimulants are not a good idea, both in men yep. um, and in women. It can cause more problems, not directly necessarily. So it's not like the caffeine or the stimulant itself is causing a lowering of testosterone or issues with estrog estrogen or, or progesterone necessarily, although in women there may be some estrogen issues, but that's disputable. It's really through the indirect effect of increasing the stress in the body. So you're already stressed. Then you add stimulant on top of that. It's lifting it up even higher. So now the stress level is even higher uh, through chemicals. Um, and then because of that, now things start to feel bad. Now, here's the shitty part. If you're in this state of being, backing out of it can suck. Oh, yeah. Right? Because then you go through the whole like, oh, my gosh, I feel like garbage. Withdrawal. Yeah, because your body's adapted uh, to having so much stimulant. So here's a recommendation Cut your stimulant use, if you need to reduce it um, or need to go off for a second, cut your stimulant use down by a quarter. And then once that feels okay, cut it down by another quarter and, until you're down to zero. Going cold turkey can be really, I know people who do it, yeah. but it can be I real nasty. I focus on drinking water too. That's a big yeah. priority for me. And honestly, if you're somebody who's wondering, like, how do I know if I'm somebody who's being affected by this? Not, I think it's just a good practice for anybody uh, to wing on and off all the time. Yeah. I just think that yeah. anything that you are doing in your life that you find yourself uh, doing every single day, even if it's just two coffees, right? Like just two coffees a day or or maybe you don't even do coffee. You just do pre-workouts every time before you work out. I mean, I think there's I think there's a, a healthy relationship with the ability to be able to just say, I'm not going to use that for two right. weeks or three weeks. So 
uh, forget just the what it may be doing for muscle building. I think the the psychological uh, ability to do that I think is important. Yeah, if you feel like you need it, like I have to have right. it, right? Then you then you uh, might want to visit. That's your that's your sign right mm. there. If if like you, if it's just it's like when I used to, it's like the conversation I used to have with clients that would refuse to drink wine. And I'd be like, listen, I'm you not mean saying refuse to eliminate wine. Yeah, yeah, refuse to eliminate wine in their diet. Like, oh, I'm not giving up my wine. It's just like, well, you might want to look into that a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if you think that you have to have your wine every so and I'm. And I'm I'm not saying that you can't have things like that and enjoy it. I'm I'm totally for somebody. And I had a glass of wine last weekend. I'm not against having a glass of wine, but if you've become so dependent on any substance every single day, you've got to start questioning that about you. And nobody can do that better than yourself. And so you need to evaluate that and ask yourself if you claim that you need a pre-workout every single time you work out, there's probably a little bit of a problem there. Next question is from Catherine B. Fit. How do you go about training and nutrition with clients who have lost their period? Oh yeah, this is a this is a good mm. one. So um, there's a few things. First off, you want to make sure there's no like big medical issues as to why this is happening. Um, but usually, this is what uh, what it ends up being. Usually, it's somebody whose stress levels are too high, or they're not handling them well. Uh, their sleep isn't good. They're not eating an adequate amount of calories and or essential macronutrients like fats, proteins, sometimes carbohydrates, sometimes going on a strict keto diet for too long can cause this. They may also be overtraining and under fat. They may have too, they may be too lean. Essentially, you want to, you want to understand one thing is that your body, if it feels like it's an unsafe Mm. state, unhealthy state, or uh, not a good context to be fertile, it'll prevent that from happening. And so it can be any of the things I talked about yeah. or all of the Lack things. Lack of nutrients, stress, all that stuff. All that stuff. So you, typically what I would do with a client uh, in this case, and usually I would work with a doctor, by the way. It wasn't like they'd come to me specifically to fix this, but this would be one of the things that they would list as, as one of their issues, or I would ask them about this. When I, what I would do is I would reverse diet them. So I'd slowly increase their calories. I'd have them focus on building strength. We would uh, make sure that their their proteins and fats and carbohydrates were balanced. I wouldn't have them cut anything too low. Um, we'd look at their sleep, and then we would observe. And usually after a period of a few months, uh, I'd say probably 70% of the time, if not maybe a little more, we would start to see things start to regulate. It's funny. I, I actually have a couple clients who's, who hired me, and I can think off the top of my head. Their goal was to improve their health and fitness, and uh, as a result of it, we got pregnant. They didn't realize that, that. I mean, that wasn't a goal that they hired me for, but they were like, oh my gosh, I, you know, my husband and I had been trying for a long time and my period was super, but uh, we just got pregnant. And it was all because my approach through fitness was improving their health. So that was a side effect of it. Yeah, this mm. is this is actually, or at least for me, this was actually pretty common. Um, I, I saw this a lot and maybe, that, maybe more so in my uh, early years. And I think that had a lot to do with the, it's, it's normally a combination, right? It's rarely ever uh, a client loses their period just because they're stressed at work, you know, like, or the client loses their period just because they're on a low calorie diet for a while. Like it's normally like the kind of the perfect storm. They're kind of doing all of those things. Uh, the most common for me uh, was actually women that were under eating fat and calories and also really stressed. Mm-hmm. So I would get these high performing ladies that were, you know, CEOs right. or entrepreneurs. So they're kind of grinders working really hard, answering calls all night long. Yeah. Right. High stress level, not sleeping really well. Also growing or coming up in the nineties the, the and early two thousands of demonizing fat still. And so they ate, you know, ch- chicken breasts and salads all day long and were only consuming 1200 calories. And then they also want, me to train them three to five days a week and then that 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 created this perfect storm for the the period to shut down and simply by me pulling back on the intensity making some effort towards you know reducing stress and sleep and increasing their healthy fats almost always fixed it Mm -hmm. now of course there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. This is a very individualized, depends type of question. But in my experience, that was some of the most common offenders. It is your your fertility. This is both for men and for women. Is a very it's a it's a pretty remarkable single signal that can tell you something is off. I mean, you may be feeling like you're good, like you feel good, maybe because you're not listening to the signals of your body and you're just, you're wired all the time. So you think that that's a good thing. Right. And you may be like my, I have a buddy who, this is a guy 
whose sperm count was below fertile. Right. And he's just like, man, I felt good. And I'm asking, like, what do you mean you felt good? He's like, well, I was working and I wasn't getting good sleep, but I was hyped. And I'm like, okay, you're in this hyped state of being all the time. Your body's not going to want to procreate. So same thing, got him to sleep, increased his, his calories, focused a little bit more on strength training, less on the other intense type workouts. And his sperm count, you know, climbed quite a bit. Same thing happens for women. This is one of those signals. And what 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 I don't what I don't like is that we tend to band aid it. So what they'll do with women is they'll they'll maybe prescribe fertility drugs and other things, which sure it could it could make you you know drop an egg or produce more or whatever, or for men you know give them testosterone. But you're really band you're putting a band aid over a problem, and over time that problem might actually get worse, especially now that you're ignoring it uh, by putting a band aid over. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. Me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. My body doesn't respond like it used to, and I'm you know, having this argument with Make, Jessica. <laughs> making all these excuses. Yeah, up. and I'm having this argument with Jessica. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, listen, honey, I know my body, okay? I've been training forever. Like, it's just it's just older. It's just not responding like... Anyway, I started doing, you know, right, working out more frequently, and boom. Everything's, Imagine everything's that. coming back. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> mm.